G'day, Theo the Woodturner here. On behalf of Record Power, welcome to my workshop. Today I'm playing with the Coronet Herald and I'm using the latest in mini chucks from Record Power. It's the SC2 chuck with the standard mini jaws. And I'm going to use this faceplate ring. So I've got a piece of wood here. It's a piece of New Guinea rosewood. It's about 190 across and about 50 mil deep. And uh, I'm going to place this yeah, on the piece of wood with screws. Um, first of all, I have to decide which is going to be the top of the bowl and which is going to be the bottom. I could leave the sapwood in the bowl, but I've decided that I'd rather have the bowl sit this way and eliminate the sapwood. It would, while it could make a good contrast, um, I'd rather take it off. So what I've done, I've scribed the circle after finding the center, um, just a little bit bigger than the face plate so that I could then use that circle to orient the face plate so it's in the middle. I've pre-drilled the holes and I'll show you how I did that. I took my drill and I took a screw, I put it through the face plate ring and then checked to see how deep the screw was going to go and put my tape accordingly so that I didn't drill too deep. It's very easy to do that accidentally. Now it's a matter of mounting those screws. And now to mount the blank straight onto the chuck. Just putting pressure in the middle of the blank. Now to position the tool rest. So firstly, I'm going to true this up. Now for this little bowl, I'm using the latest in record power turning tools. This is the 3 8 inch bowl gouge, the 3 16 parting tool, and the half inch domed scraper. So I'll take the gouge and check the speed. I've got it set in the, in the center belt setting and um, so I've got a minimum speed of 140 to a maximum of uh, 1868 but first of all let's put it on that face shield taking the lathe up to about a thousand Still not true. little bit of tear out in the end grain. Now I'm going to true up this face as well which is going to be the base.
bring up the speed a little to 1200 So I just need to lower the tool rest a little and stop the lathe to do that. So this is, as I mentioned earlier, was, is going to be the base. Just using a shearing cut there. And I'm going to mark with my dividers <coughs> the diameter of the base. And there it is there. So that will be the size of the recess so we can use expansion force and that's exactly the same diameter as the entrance to the faceplate ring I'm using the parting tool as a negative rake scraper. Now to shape the bowl. Well, the easiest way to shape it is to take cuts along this way with the bowl gouge. You can see there we're cutting with the grain and getting a nice finish off the tool. Now I'll just take a shear cut along here and tidy this up. It's going to be the base of our bowl. Fairly flat. It's going to sit right here on the rim. Now I'm just going to move the tool rest and change to a shear cut.
might just bring this foot down a little bit here and shape it. Just about got to where I'm going. Now I'm taking a really light cut. Well, that's ready for sanding. I'll bring the dust extraction up. Starting with 80 grit. One twenty. One eighty. Now it just needs a little sanding in the middle. I'll start with 180. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So I've turned off the lathe while I'm applying this because I want the oil to be drawn into the timber. There is a thinners with this oil and that's why I was shaking it up and the thinners helps break down the oil and helps it penetrate deeper than the surface. And now I'll just turn on the lathe slowly. I'm just bringing it up to about 400. So I'm only going to use the same tissue that I put it on with rather than get a fresh tissue because if you do that you just take the oil off. The whole idea now is to burnish it, create a little bit of heat. So I'm just taking it up to about 900 and now to 1400 and that will create some heat which will evaporate the thinners and the oil will just go pop. It will be nice and hard. I just have to wait for it to cool down before I touch it. Otherwise, I will leave fingerprints on it while it's still warm. And let's see what that looks like. You can just see that beautiful chatoyance in the timber, New Guinea rosewood. So the measurement I took with my dividers was this measurement here. That was the measurement that I put on the bottom of the bowl for the recess to match this recess exactly. And there it is there. Including this light dovetail. So now using expansion force in the recess, the great thing is that the chuck will not mark the inside because it will form a fairly perfect circle. And we'll hold this true while I turn it. So if it's early days for you in wood turning, then one of the things you can do to make sure that you don't go through the bottom of the bowl is you take a drill bit. You can either put it in the Jacob's chuck or make a handle for a drill bit. And I call this the rule of thumb because you put your thumb on there and you hold it across, remembering there's a recess there of about five to six millimeters. And you only want the bowl to be, you want to leave at least 10 millimeters from the bottom and a bit more and then you put your electrical tape right there. And so we're going to put a hole in the middle. It does make it so much easier when you've taken out the middle. Now there is a little point on that so I'm just going to stop just before I get to the tape and that will do.
So to hollow this then, I'll, first of all I'll take a nice cut across here and just true that up. Bringing the speed up. Again to about 1200. I'll go in square. Now remembering that the wood is travelling a lot slower in the middle, so we just take it nice and steady. So I'll just take a slightly lighter cut. And I'm making sure that I come in with the bevel at right angles so it doesn't slip across the work. That's it there. And then once you get started, you're fine. And I can actually hear it now that I've just about got to where I want to go. And there's the centre. I can go a lot. Ooh, we've got a little bit of a breakout just there. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just take another cut here and make that, bring that to thickness. And then I'll work my way down and come back and and trim that up. I'm just working my way up. and then coming in a lot flatter. And I'll just take a nice cut across here. I can even slope that downwards slightly. take a sheer cut and tidy that up.
So I can feel a bit of a ridge from, from here to there. So if I pick up the cut here, I'll just show you, I'll mark it with a pencil from about here. And from here, so I'll just take that ridge out with the bowl gouge and then we'll finish off with the scraper. So the whole idea of using the scraper is to use it in a fashion where we're pointing it downwards and creating what we call a negative rake. There was a little bit of vibration there. Uh, there's just a, a little bit just here that I need to... Pointing downwards. With the inside of a bowl, a lot of times you can feel what you can't see. So that's pretty good. I think that's ready for finishing. You can see there's hardly any tear out. So we'll start again with the sanding with 80 grit. And with the last grid, I sand with the grain. Again, some Triple E Ultra Shine. which is a um, burnishing compound. And it's important to keep it moving. Otherwise, you will leave little marks as well if you don't keep the burnishing moving initially. I'll do it by hand. then turning slowly just using a paper towel just taking the speed up now to about 1500 
not too much pressure. And now I'll tear off a little bit of tissue and grab the Aussie oil. You can see that flashing immediately, can't you? The, that's the chatoyance in the wood. And again, turning slowly. bring up the speed I'm up to a thousand create a little bit of heat so the thinners in the oil evaporates and we'll get a nice hard finish straight off the lathe just increasing it now to 1400 It's a good idea when you're doing this to have short fingernails because you can mark it. You can mark the work. Oops. And let's have a look at what that looks like. there you have it. Our bowl is turned and finished. Let's have a look at the bottom. You can't even tell that it was mounted on a chuck. It's done. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out. I hope there was a little bit of learning in that for you as to how to turn a lovely little bowl using that faceplate ring it's a mini faceplate ring that comes with the SC2 mini chuck and is great used with the standard mini jaws. So thanks for watching and thank you to Record Power for inviting me to uh, into your place to show you what I do and how I do it. Um, hope you've enjoyed that and uh, I'll see you again soon. Stay safe.